it's cracking. Okay, so I don't know where I last left off, but the LVLs are all set in place, leveled out. Everything is golden. Um, I'm very happy with how that turned out. Everything is basically sitting where it needs to be sitting. So I'm going to try and explain how I'm going to lay my floor out. This is probably different for everybody. This just happens to be how I worked it out with um, my buddy and I who uh, laid out the designs for the house. What, um, my plan is, is to come in an inch and a half by an inch and a half on each corner. I laid these mud sills out so that they were level with the outside wall. Come in an inch and a half by an inch and a half, make an X, drop a nail. I'm gonna snap a line all the way around the mud sill, inch and a half in, which will essentially be for the rim joist. So the idea is to snap the line, like I said, now, I'm starting, most people that would build know, you know, pick a corner and that's going to be your, if, you, if that's where you're measuring from, then you're going to pull from that side all the time, which is this corner for me. So the idea is that I made my first mark at 17 and a half inches. Um, it's a little bit weird because of how the first couple sheets of plywood are going to, of subfloor are going to lay out, but it makes it so that I don't have either a small piece sitting over there, but most importantly, it puts lines my joists up in a way that when I get over to some double joists for the crawl space um, scuttle, as well as, like I said, the toilet flange and some of the plumbing that I won't have any issues. So after I measured over 17 and a half on there and 17 and a half coming up here, I snapped the line across the LVL to make sure that I was nice and even from 17 and a half inches off here. The idea is 17 and a half and then my X is on this side, 17 and a half and my X is on this side. In the middle, it's 17 and a half and I got an X on each side, that's where we're gonna overlap. From there, I drove a nail right in the center of the 17 and a half, in the center of the 17 and a half, and in the center of 17 and a half. And then the idea is that I'm gonna pull my steel tape all the way across. I measure for my 16 and then an X on the other side, my 16 and my X on the other side. I've got my center line marked right here for my center joist, and now I'm marking 16 inch all the way down the LVL so that I can make my line with an X on each side. That way I know where my floor joists are gonna overlap. And then once I feel confident, I'll run the steel tape down both the 40 foot sides, start laying out my floor joist markings there. That way I can basically, once I get everything lined up on this side and get the superior wall bracing and blocking done, it's really just gonna be a matter of throwing, you know, laying all the floor joists, marking the crowns, laying them out, and then just basically going through, flipping them up, getting them even with the um, rim joist lines on the outside, toe down them in, toe down them in, toe down them in the center, and then just work my way all the way down. When I get to about, you know, right in this general section here, I'm gonna start doubling up a couple of the floor joists because we're gonna have a crawl space scuttle inside the pantry. All right, so I got all the joists marked out along this wall. Make it nice and easy for myself, both sides. And then all of the joists marked out along the LVO. And then I just had this last wall to do. And then my wife just showed up. Uh, we're gonna pull lines from the 40 foot side. And then Hey, another good morning here on the homestead. <clears throat> um, I didn't really show too, too much yesterday. I think we had some video footage of us in the back, but just to give you an idea of what's going on. So we have the first three floor joists on. And as you can see, there's a lot of bridging and bracing and that has a lot to do with, <clears throat> that has a lot to do with superior walls warranty. So this is the bracing, I mean, Maybe people have seen this before. And don't get confused, the rim joist is just off. It'll be the last thing that we put on. But this is generally how it works. So this basically makes sure that 
the slab, the slab that's poured inside that comes up three inches on the wall, and then the bracing. Now, superior wall only calls for on a crawl space the bracing and the first row of blocking or bridging. Um, we just took it an extra step and did two rows, which would be for um, a seven foot and over wall, um, just to be kind of safe rather than sorry. But basically, this just gets shot in, shot in along the bottom. And basically, what this does is it makes sure when they backfill that the wall can't push under and it can't push over. I mean, it's like a cement floor. So the idea today is we're just going to pick up where we left off and we're just going to start running floor joists all the way down this side, then running floor joists all the way down that side and then meeting them up in the middle. And then when we get to about this area here, we're going to have to do a little bit of finagling to double up some two by 10 crosses for the scuttle that we're going to make for the crawl space. And then we're going to come down this, hopefully we'll get down here and then we can do the same thing that we did on this side for superior walls warranty as far as the bridging and bracing down on this side so that's the idea for today and uh, you know we'll see how far we get and uh, you know, just go from there but one step at a time all is good so far um, I don't know if I said yesterday but basically what we're doing is we have a 2 by 10 by 16 you know it's a 28 foot wide house so what we're doing is we're cutting off 14 and a half inches off the end of the floor joist checking the crown throwing the floor joist in putting the 14 and a half aside so that we can use it for uh, bridging so it worked out pretty nice to be able to cut the bridging off each end of the floor joist. Makes kind of stinks that we got to do each cut, but I'd rather do that than sit and cut 80 pieces at the end. So, or even more. Smile, you're on camera. <laughs> I use nail gun. All right. Dana, Dana's a nail gun champion. So we're going to get set up for this morning and keep going, but so far so good. We'll see how far we get today. Hopefully we can blow out the whole floor. What's up, y'all? So, tried to set the camera up and do a little bit of just let it do its thing throughout the day. I don't know how much we caught. Nine times out of ten, the camera just fell over, and two hours later, we figured out that it was sitting on the ground. Um, so, we'll see how much footage we actually got of us doing the subfloor, man. But the subfloor got done today. One day, what can a husband and wife do in one day? A subfloor. That's what we can do. But I am super proud of us can't believe that we actually banged the entire subfloor out in pretty much a day. I've got two, maybe three more days that I can spend up here before I have to go back to work. And the idea is that if I can get the rim joists and the subfloor on in the next two days, we will be in uh, really great shape to uh, throw a huge tarp on this bad boy and, um, you know, put this phase to rest and then uh, hopefully in the next few weeks be back to start throwing walls and trusses up at least that's the idea but so very excited so proud of my wife and I long time coming we've watched so many channels and 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 different stories and videos of people just doing this and you know years ago we said man we can do this we can do this and I can't believe here we are we're doing it you know but there it is tomorrow rim joist start the subfloor or the uh, you know, sheathing one Floor joists are all in, scuttles all cut out. Everything's pretty much done. Few, few pieces of blocking I think that we need to add in there around the, uh, the doubled up joist where the scuttle is, but that's no problem. I can take care of all that. Everything else is 
looking pretty sweet. But thanks for hanging out today, and we'll be back tomorrow with uh, the next step. So enjoy the night. I know that my wife and I are going to go eat some dinner and uh, drink some water and go to bed. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll catch you tomorrow when we pick up where we left off. Have a good night.